Today we're going to talk about what I do to make viral short form videos. I've amassed over a billion views on all my videos across my platforms, let alone outside of all the places it's been shared elsewhere. This all started in 2014 when I joined the platform Vine. Your videos would have to be square in 6.5 seconds. You may remember it, you may be too young to remember it, but either way, it was a great time. My first viral video online was the video of Drake playing tennis and it was this one right here. This video did over 20 million views on my page alone, let alone all the meme pages that shared it, and there were countless news articles written about it as well, including ones from Rolling Stone, Washington Post, ESPN, and a bunch more. At this point as well, I also honed in on a niche, and for me it's making magical VFX videos. All the content I produce now somehow fits under that umbrella. If you fast forward from 2015 till now, I now make a living making short form content online. So now I'm going to share with you the six elements I use in all of my viral videos that hopefully will help you on your own creative journey. And I have one bonus aspect that I'll talk about at the end of the video as well. So let's break down a few of my most viral videos and see how they come to life. Let's start with story. This can be challenging and take time, but I think it's really worth it to really have a video that resonates with your audience. For me, a lot of times I start a video with a fun effect or a fun moment in mind, and I have to build a story out from that. My wife painted a Mario mural for me on the back wall of my office. I thought it was the coolest thing ever. I was obsessed with it, and I really wanted to make a video with it. And the first thing that came to mind was how cool would it be if this painting came to life as if it was the video game itself? There's the spectacle I want to sell. The story I came up with is I'm slacking on responsibilities, and I sit down, I plug a controller into the wall, I play the game on the wall, and hopefully by this point, I believe three seconds into the video, the viewer is hooked. And then my wife, when she asks what I'm up to, I try to hide the fact I'm playing the game. And by the time my wife opens the door, I'm turned into a paper 8-bit version of myself that falls to the floor. It's that extra element to just push the video to the next level. So this is my most viral video on TikTok. I called it Life Forms. The effect I had in mind was doing something of transitioning from real life footage to animation. So in this example, the story that I eventually came up with was, wouldn't it be cool if I see a random floating object on the screen? It doesn't take long from that moment for me to start interacting with that object to then have a payoff for that intro. As it consumes my body, I then fold back into just the sphere at the beginning of the video, and the video loops. It gives a whole new context to that intro you've already seen. And to date, this is one of my most viral videos I made, and it was from a few years ago. Number two is having a strong intro. It's important if you want people to stay around, especially people that don't follow you. You want to give them a reason to give your video a chance. So it's important that not only the first image, but the first second or two of your video really makes an impact on the person watching. If the first image of one of the videos I'm posting is just a dude on his phone, what can I do to make that interesting to somebody who's scrolling? Why why would somebody stop on that video? In this video, I'm in an all white room in a painter's outfit messing around with a Rubik's cube. As I twist the Rubik's cube, the colors change behind me, which at first looked like a digital effect. But as I move in the space, you realize that I'm actually in a painted room to match the cube. As an extra element, when I throw the cube up, the colors go crazy. A strong intro for the video was starting with a room that was completely white with only the Rubik's cube having color. Hopefully as you're scrolling through a bunch of videos that may look similar, this video is gonna stand out and make you wanna sit for a minute. You'll notice that we quickly move in the intro, but in no way do I explain the rules of the room. It's up to you as the audience to figure out what I'm doing to the Rubik's cube and how it affects the room. That goes to number three, a quick exit. Once you've communicated the main point of your story, it's a good point to end the video, make your audience long for more and want to watch that video again. A great example of this is my fake trick shot video involving a race car track. In this video, I throw a DVD on a race car track that lands inside the Xbox and inserts itself. That was the idea in a nutshell. There's not much to it. I thought the idea was interesting and fun enough that people would want to share it for that reason. That being said, I didn't really have much more to add to the video. So the second I take the DVD out of the Xbox, I let the video end and I don't let it hold out. This leads really well into my next point, which is a video that loops. Now, when I say looping, this can be a visual thing, it can be an audio thing, or it can be both. Easier said than done, looping is a great way to ease your audience right back into the same video, and sometimes, if it's done well enough, they don't even realize the video started over again. It's a rewarding experience for an audience, and it can give a whole new meaning to the beginning of the video. I was making a video for Samsung showing off their Z Fold 5, and eventually, this is what we came up with. The house is on fire, she's pulling up a picture of a fire extinguisher, I'm using it to set off the kitchen, and then the next question is, well, why was the kitchen on fire to begin with? Well, I was making the kids lunches and I have no idea what I'm doing, which is not true. I know how to make lunches. There would be no need to use the stove to make peanut butter and jelly. So Karina pulls up a picture of lunch for the kids. And once I grab the lunches, I have Karina close the phone. And when she does that, the video loops perfectly. Having a video loop is a great way of letting your audience ease into the video once again. This not only will up your chances of the video going viral, it also will be enjoyable for your audience. And it'd probably give them a pretty awesome experience too. Number five, shareability. Share, is it shareable? Share, 
sharing. Keep in mind that as you make videos, if it feels like something your friends would share with their friends, there's a great chance that video could go viral. If the video you're making is a relatable experience that other people go through, they're more likely to want to share that video with other people. That's not to say that the only videos that are shareable are relatable, but it's for other reasons. Those reasons may be visual spectacle, something somebody's never seen before or never seen from that perspective and they really want to share it with a friend. Other reasons people will share videos are because they're informative or educational, but I'll share more on that at the end of this video. The next example is this Roman Empire video I did. There was a trend going on for a while of guys thinking about the Roman Empire. So I had this idea where I'm transported back into the Roman Empire, but the portal in question would be a doorway that leads directly into the Roman Empire. As my wife is asking what the heck is going on, a spear hits the soldier next to me, and then I'm trying to defend my wife as I close the door behind her, and the video loops. I love making videos loop where possible. You'll notice that the intro of this video makes a lot more sense when you've seen the end of the video, that I'm tucking the sword behind the pillow, which may not be apparent on first viewing. The part that really works about the intro is the trend of, hey babe, how often do you think about the Roman Empire? That is enough for people to know where the video is going, but it's kind of a twist on a trend that already existed. The first visual effect here is the clothing transformation from normal attire to Roman attire. Me and my brother being dressed up like party city Romans is another reason to share the video as well. And number six is that extra element. That extra element is almost like a reward for your audience for sticking around with the video. Maybe something as simple as an Easter egg you sneak into the end of the video, or maybe just you building off a joke you made prior in the video, or in my case, an extra effect that builds on the effect that happened earlier in the video. I believe it was Zach King who said it's the extra 10% at the end of the video that just gives it that extra oomph. This video collectively did tens of millions of views on social media. I called it Make Up Your Mind. I've also referred to this video as Cafe Confusion. This idea originated from the idea of transforming one food item to another. The overall story is an employee getting frustrated with the customer and at the end eventually throwing the pie he's made at the customer only to miss the irritating customer and hit the one behind him. After I've hit a customer with the pie, I still have the nerve to push out that tip screen for the extra 20%. Or I guess extra 10% because like the extra 10% at the end of the video. The frustration and the relatability of being an indecisive customer or being behind the indecisive customer led this video to being shared quite a bit. <laughs> But this is a great time to bring up that bonus aspect I told you at the beginning of the video, and that is compelling behind the scenes. It's pulling back the curtain to show people how you do what you did, either in a visual or an audio way. While the Roman Empire video did millions of views, the behind the scenes did tens of millions of views. For this behind the scenes, we're showing an alternate camera perspective so you can see my brother waiting on the other side of the set door. You also get to see the green psych wall covered in track markers, plus the crash pad, and all these elements are extremely informative to somebody trying to do this for themselves. From a normal consumer perspective, it's also extremely interesting to see how we pulled this off. This also allows the audience to judge if you did a really bad job or a really great job compositing your shot. In this example, most people liked the video overall, but they did notice that the spear felt a little floaty that hit my brother's chest. This became kind of a common talking point. And that's another thing to think about. When people are talking about your video, sometimes not positively, it's also a form of engagement and it's a great way of gauging if people feel like your content is important enough to even talk about. Don't intentionally create controversy in your videos just for the sake of comments, but if people are commenting ways that you can improve your video, you can take that constructive criticism and make adjustments in the future. Here's another example of behind the scenes crushing it online. In 2020, I had a video that did not perform that well with me shaking a Coke bottle, smushing it onto the wall, and it turns into a painting. However, immediately after, I decided to post the raw footage to show how we made it. This video was shared like crazy and people are commenting, oh, it looks so simple or, I didn't realize it'd be that easy to put together. At the very least, if you're not trying to recreate this yourself, it's interesting to watch. But if you're trying to learn for yourself, this could be extremely informative to you. I made two types of behind the scenes content. One that I would dive into exactly what I'm doing, and another one where I'm just showing a behind the scenes angle of the shoot that we did. Both of these types of content performed extremely well, garnering millions if not tens of millions of views every time I post these types of videos. This kind of content usually will check off most of those aspects that I was talking about earlier. For this Domino's ad I did, almost did 100 million views across all platforms. In this video, I provide not one, but two camera angles to show how we made this ad. You'll see my brother running in and out of the shot, adding objects and taking them away. You'll see Nate moving the camera and holding it still when he needs Needs to. You also see Quentin moving the boom mic as needed to make sure we're getting proper audio for this video. You can also see how we mess things up in production that then have to be fixed in post-production, namely the table's positioning, or boxes opening, or the camera drifting a little bit. All of these things are extremely valuable from an educational standpoint, but they're also very interesting to watch visually. You may be thinking, why two camera angles? Well, one reveals the raw footage that I'm working with for the edit, and the other angle is revealing all the elements you get outside of the shot, namely the people, the movement, the rigging, the set design, you name it. This video accidentally, a happy accident. <laughs> if you look carefully at the beginning of the video, it looks like Nate is literally holding a red lightsaber and people were talking like crazy about this in the comments. It was a total accident, but it worked in our favor. After this video, we totally had these accidents all the time. Definitely not on purpose.
These aspects of making short videos have worked extremely well for me over the last 10 years. Consistency is key. Just because a video doesn't perform well doesn't mean it wasn't a good video. Creating because you're passionate about it, regardless of the numbers, matters. If I gave up just because I had 10 or even 20 videos in a row not perform well, I would not have half the viral hits I have now. It's important to consider why you're making short form content and what you love about it and hone in on those two things while also paying attention to what's working and what's not working. At the end of the day, if you're creating content that you love and are passionate about and you're consistent with it, eventually you'll be surprised with how far you can go. You're gonna notice a pattern of growth and increased quality in everything you put out. Every mistake you learn along the way will help you make a better video next time around. If you guys have any specific questions about the videos I make, please put them in the comments because I would love to answer them in a future video. That's it, those are all my tips and tricks for today. Hopefully you found this video helpful. And if you did, make sure you subscribe for more videos like this. I'll catch you in the next one. Bye. See ya.